What's going on, fellow duelists? YGO Life here, back again with another episode of Yu Gi Oh! Um, Yu Gi Oh! YGO Life um, Duelist Talk. Um, today we're just gonna um, this video is gonna be discussing the um, iconic spells in the pe previous pass of the game being removed off the list and or old spell cards that really doesn't see that much play in current meta games but they are still valuable and I feel like everybody should really have this in their collection or bolt that even if, even if you trade them for common version of this these cards these are actually good just to have to keep them just like when I um if you haven't checked out episode two um I'll try to add in the um adaptation to the video to check that out and this one is going to be for the spells the last one was on the traps and um if you have any other ideas I can do for this um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist Talk segment, please comment and let me know. But I'm going to go ahead and get into the segment. I'm starting this off with the first card that came out of the list. It's limited to one, but not a lot of people play it um, with the release of Lightning Storm and other things. A lot of decks doesn't main Raigeki. Um, also, same time, I want to talk about Darko also with Raigeki, so... You have um you have Dark Hole and then you have Ragaki. Dark hole Ragaki hits your field, Dark Hole clears everything in your field. Honestly, I feel like for a lot of budget players who do play, I see this not in a deck list or you don't even catch it in a side deck. I feel like if a deck is lower than tier three, this should be in the side or even in main, just because it very helps them out. A lot of people have moved away from just maining Dark Hole, just to be maining Dark Hole or Raigeki because the skill level of players have gotten better with the progress, with the progression of um, pendulums and everything else that um, comes out with the game with links and stuff and with effects being cold, things can't be destroyed by um, card effects. So Dark Hole is one of the cards that can be dead and situational depending on what type of boards your opponent have, but also when you play them players that pit up them to negate boards to have extra cards like Dark Hole for them to negate and then play a Raigeki or Harpy Fella Duster to get rid of the gates. It's it's very helpful and it's just card for thoughts for duelists. It's just Dark Hole being at three, but not really much seeing plays, but mind you that in this modern day, you can play any deck because of links and Master Rule Five is you can play synchros and you can have three dark holes in the deck just to keep on bringing out synchros every turn each deck if you're allowed to normal summon a tuner and special summon another monster or special summon a tuner and summon a non tuner monster and synchro. So it's you can go turn for turn, you know, change the play style, making the game more slower with certain stun cards on your opponent. But that's just for the monster destruction for spell cards. Um, for um, next we're gonna talk about um spell and trap card removal, the best of all times. Basically, MST it used to be at one, but now it's at three. People barely even play it because of um the new release of um Twin Twister. Twin Twister being released um is um. Discard a card um, and select up the two cards to destroy on the field, but you still have to discard a card. Um, I feel like Twin Twist is one of them good, good to have in every deck because every deck has one of them dead draw moments. They need to ditch something or a hand trap. Now we're going to have one these Twin Twisters who can't get used to hand trap as a discard fodder for cost. But it's... um. MST Twin Twisters, I feel like they both the same. It's just Twin Twister remake is, I mean MST Mystical Space Typhoon is Twin Twister new is turning into Twin Twister, but either player preference with a and also Cosmic Cyclone because it banished spell and trap cards off the field. Just another alternative to um, spell and trap card removal in the game. You know, since we have um this. Glad that we have more than just setting a dust tornado like we have to set a dust tornado or I forgot that um 
the new Death Tornado one, but um, the neck that one also. So we have those um, for the Spinal Trap card removal. That's best of all times. Um, Spinal Trap card removal. Um, next card I want to talk about is something people really need to really take in consideration. Um, Book of Moon. Book of Moon interrupts a lot of things in this game that people really don't understand with um, basically you're stopping most summons from the extra deck when they summon monster. You have two or more monster. You just flip one face down. They can't overlay. They can't really do nothing. Um, Book of Moon came off the list. A couple band lists. I want to say three band lists ago. Went to three. And Quite frankly, I say it really helps with Book of Moon being back. And it's like, I played it in my crawler deck. I have a crawler deck also on my channel, so you can check that out. Seeing Book of Moon in their um, deck profile. But the Book of Moon and crawler deck, it was wonderful. It's stopping my opponent from doing things when they target it with their own card effects. When they put the monster face down, it just makes things unable to resolve. So, Book of Moon, just ironic. Um... I feel like it should start to see more play because Bandless come out December 15th and we still don't have Max C. Basically, Book of Moon is your Max C, even though you have to set up if you go first, but going first is good because it's a quick play spell. You can flip it on your opponent's turn. You can activate a hand anytime if you need to, to um, for your monster. So. Turn if the Book of Moon it has seen more play since its release of coming out. It's people player preference. Another side deck choice, you know. Maxi's still not here, but turn all your opponent monster face down, then they draw, but they can't use them cards that they draw, so on the end phase that they draw. So you're kinda good and it helpful. It player playing around your opponent's board, but another way to put monster face down, book eclipse. Honestly, this has come from the Synchro era right here. Um, I remember like Billy Blake, Billy Blake um, running this, which hitting Danny Line in a Synchro format um, in the Synchro era. It was just like, this was crazy. Like, enemy controller. And the reason why I want to talk about enemy controller in this video and how good it is is because change the monster battle position to negate attack, keeping you alive. It's also good. That's mediocre good. But the thing about it is when your opponent summons a Nibiru in attack mode. So if your opponent summons Nibiru in attack mode and give you a token in defense after tributing all your monsters in these combo decks. So enemy controller in combo decks, you get the token. And if you're going second or you're able to attack that turn, you just tribute the token they give you and hit them with 3k punishing them. Mind you... If you have nothing else after that, hitting them with 3K and your um, you give them back the new beer, you might not have nothing else. If you have nothing, if they hit the new beer at the right moment, but it's just alternative. Your opponent new beer, you you can just deal them um, you can just deal them 3K off of they own the beer, so they drop the beer on your combo and you aim control the tribune. To, the token, the Biru token, and taking their um the Biru and swinging with 3k is quite possible. And you know, um, say for instance, you're playing if you're playing blue eyes and your opponent the Biru, you somehow because you're going off with guard dragons and they the Biru, you, you can just um aim control it and silver cry blue eyes back and just overlay it. So that's I kind of thought of this with my own. Um, Sidedness for my heretic deck because I still have to tribute, so then I still get a normal a normal monster. So that's just my opponent. If I side deck a level eight normal dragon and heretics, I will most likely play enemy control during it. That's a good little attack. Um, 
like in episode two, I talked about starlight robe protecting your boards, um, something else that can protect your board, but at a high cost of 15 life points. My body is a shield. This thing has been in pro player side decks, um, a lot of other people's side decks, because just destruction, trying to destroy something, you just protect it and negate and destroy it. And it's a quick play spell, so it's a play spell that you can activate from hand when your opponent tries to save it as you go to summon your opponent turns your tribute. My body is a shield, pay 15, you're good, but his stuff is gone, so. Well, it negates the activation and destroys it. So it's a negates destruction by paying 15 and destroys it. So that's just um, another tech choice. My body is a shield, especially when you like with links, with cold links. I really, we did not see any of this play for the past two years, really in main events. But it's one of them cards where if you have it in your collection or you have it in your boat of building decks is you'll see the use for it while you're dueling you'll be like oh you gotta put pit it in your side deck the neck um forbidden dress you do 600 attack but it can't be destroyed by um By destroy or target by other card effects, you know, making your monster unable to be targeted with Forbidden Dress is is part of the Forbidden. That's basically what it is. Um, no ones that everyone tend to play Forbidden Chalice negate monster effect and it gains four hundred. So it works kind of both ways in the scenario. Same as um, Lancia. So you got Forbidden Chalice and Forbidden Lancia. Lancia, people have not been really playing because I understand a lot of people don't play traps. Um, I guess the only thing you would use it for would be a Paizoic match, but not very useful in there because when Chalice would be more useful just to negate the um, Toad, totally awesome. So it's really the... um. Forbidden just to help, you know, protect your monster, or even if you have to use them, you can use them so you can get over your opponent monster in a way. So, just the forbidden, the forbidden card spell, quick play spell cards are in their own category to the way you want to play them, which ones you want to play in certain decks. You, you might have a deck you rather play Lancia, and then the next deck you might just want to play Chalice more. So. It's player preference on these. It just, just don't forget about them. These are still iconic, good cards. Um, um, this concludes my um episode three of YGO Life Duelist Talk. If you like this segment, please comment and subscribe. I still have more um way more content to give you guys to my channel and more to upload and. I would like to help see this channel grow, so if you like this, please tell me what you think in the comment section below, and this is YGO Life, out.